Hey everybody, this is Bob Young coming to you again from Redline Archaeology. Uh, the Jeanette, Pennsylvania collection has just arrived here. So I uh, opened the box. Here it is. It's uh, really interesting with these, uh, you know, half cut off blister packs uh, back in the day that were glued onto this uh, kid's miniature car uh, carrying case. Interesting. A lot of times uh, people kept their matchboxes in these type of cases, and these are the ones that pull out like the drawers down here from the side, as you can see. So I know there's uh, 38 cars total in this collection, so I'll put both trays out, and then uh, we'll get going from there. Make sure there's nothing else in there, no surprises. Get that out of the way. This individual filed instructions like most people do, and uh, wrapped up these cars really nice. So let's get going. Here. I remember this collection being really nice as far as condition wise. So here's a nice green Lotus turbine. Like I said, I always start with the wheels when I appraise collections. And there's a nice example of a nice Lotus turbine. Great display piece here. Really cool car. Really like the Lotus. Really like that purple and orange. Uh, it's my two favorite colors for the spoilers. I mean the Grand Prix. Here's a uh, green Cockney cab. It's got the sticker on the back as you can see. And then, uh, really nice condition. A little faded. I mean, not that real shiny. I've got one in my personal collection that's almost looks over chrome. Uh, it's so shiny. But uh, up next is a really nice 4J card. A little bit of uh, toning along the back hatch, but eh, not bad. Old gold base. I mean, this is a you know, this is a collection that comes from a, a climate that has extremes in temperature, uh, hot, cold, you know, and humidity. And I think this, where this came from, originated from is, uh, you know, it's got the uh, close to Lake, Lake Erie out there in Western Pennsylvania. So here's a front engine dragster, as you can see. Snake, it's nice, nice condition. The sticker's in good shape, nothing on the front. But good shape. I picked up a few of these lately in collections. Uh, I wouldn't say I get them a lot, but I get them fairly often. They seem to run uh, together in these collections. Here's a mongoose front engine. Nice shape. Like I tell everybody, everything is for sale. But please, only uh, serious inquiries only. Uh, I don't want to waste my time or your time. Um, you know, I understand. I'll send you as many pictures as you want. You know, within reason, but uh, please just uh, only if you're serious in, in these cars. So there's uh, racing, uh, oh, I forget what they call this one, but it's a racing fuel um, tanker, fuel tanker, but it's missing one of the, uh, the hoses in the back. It's only got one, but nice example otherwise, really clean shape. Looks like there's a little residue on the top that yeah, it's definitely coming off. I don't know what that's from, but it's coming right off. So that'll clean up nicely. All right. Up next is Boss Hoss Club Car. Eh, these, these all hold up really well. It's got some residue on it as well. So who knows if there's a sizzler or something, you know, in this case for years. But, you know, the two number five stickers are on it. But nice shape. Good club car. All right, a bunch of buttons are in here too. I see them all strewn throughout. There's a nice uh, Ferrari 312P. Lighter spray of red that you'll see sometimes with uh, these Hong Kong cars. So uh, there's the base 312P. Decent example of that. Nothing real stellar as far as condition is concerned so far, but this is a typical collection. There's an antifreeze silhouette. This is one of the first uh, cars I got as a kid. But that's in really, really, really nice condition. Nice white interior, which is, I think, the best combination for this car and for that color. All right. Here we go. Blue King Cuda. Again, it seems like these cars got some type of residue on them. I'll see if they clean up well. But not a lot of play wear. The wheels look really good. Um, the paint is not super shiny, 
on these cars yet. I'm hoping uh, it improves as time goes on, but decent looking for the. Uh, here's a nice uh, snake. I mean, mongoose too. Uh, blue, the blue spectra flame. You know, they did a lot of different test colors on these uh, snakes and mongooses back in the day. I think there were a bunch that were found, you know, in the Larry Wood collection. So, all different types of crazy colors. And, uh, and there's a fair amount of them now. Here's one. It's got some dust and dirt. That'll certainly clean up easily. But really nice example of a purple chappy. And thankfully, the wing is still there. A lot of times, these chaparrales, you know, are missing the wings. But this just has some dirt on it. I th I suspect a lot of these cars have some type of dust or dirt. And they this was in storage, uh, the individual told me. But they just pulled it out uh, recently after 50-some years, or 50 years being in storage. So, uh, same thing. Dust, dirt, aqua python. Paint's nice. It's just dirty. Well, wherever this was stored... You know, there was dust and dirt getting at these cars, but it's coming right off. All right, let's see what we got here. Peeping bomb. Looks like a red one. Now, this has dirt, but also has some toning in it as well. So, as you can see, not all the collections I get are really nice, you know. A lot of them, you know, show the 50 years of play wear. So, it's not always good. Not always incredible. So here's a demon missing the engine. I won't spend time on that because I consider these beaters. Unless I can find a demon engine lying around. Here's a nice Firebird with uh, the light blue interior. So not a bad example, but again, it's just dusty. It's got some type of dirt. It's coming right off, but I don't know what that is. All right, let's see. Got here, huh? The standard paddy wagon that I see in just about every collection, if not every collection. Probably one of the most recognizable red line era Hot Wheels. Everyone uh, recognizes that. And here's a nice lime yellow uh, jet threat that has the canopy, which a lot of times is missing on the jet threat when I get these collections. But that's a really pretty example of a jet threat. Very shiny paint. On that. Oh, nice uh, light tan green Vicky. It's a nice example of a green Vicky with that lighter tan interior because sometimes he's come in that like chocolatey brown, darker interior. But nice example of that. Okay, and through one side, ripping through here. And here's a really beautiful. Example of a green turbo fire. Really nice condition. So it's interesting how some cars get all that dust and dirt on them or some toning. And then other ones come out looking like this. Really pretty. Shiny. Some just stand the hands of time or a test of time. There's a nice example of a blue heavy Chevy with that light tan interior. Really nice example. As you can see, you know, there's a lot of spoiler fans out there, but this is a really nice, stripes are even nice on top. A lot of times they're chipped up or nicked up or pieces missing off of them. Here's an aqua ambulance, darker interior, really nice example. I think this is the color I had in my collection as a kid, was the aqua ambulance. I remember going to stores, J.C. Penney's and Always asking my parents for purple. Everything had to be purple back then. If it wasn't purple, then I wanted orange. And if they didn't have orange, I asked for blue. So my childhood collection had a lot of purple, orange, and blue cars in it, per se. But there's a decent example of an evil weevil. You know, a little bit of uh, peppering on the roof. So I'll put that with the other spoiler here. And let's see what we got here. We got a red baron. Again, oh, well, I'll get that one later. <laughs> Didn't have the shiny helmet on it. You have to trust me on that. But most times, uh, 
they don't have the shiny hel helmets, the first thing that tarnishes. Here's a nice uh, pit crew, crew car. Really great example of that. Stripes are nice. I don't know if you know, there's variations in these stripes. I have two up in my case, a really nice example, but the, uh, the stripes are a little bit different color, and I don't think it's from age or toning, and the stars are a different size. So I don't know if people know that about it. I didn't discover that until later in my collecting career that there are a couple different variations to the stickers that came with that car. Purple Twin Mill, another very recognizable red line from the rear. Like the Paddy Wagon, I get that in almost every collection. So this must be a Diora. And this is the color I had as a kid. It was the gold one. That seemed to be a very popular color that was released in this casting. And this has some even toning to it. But I'll tell you, at least 50, 60% of the time, these cars are missing the surfboards. Not so much with the beach bombs because they were secured a much better. Uh, when I get beach bombs, nine times out of ten, they have, you know, both of the surfboards. And there's a nice example of the snake, the original snake, 6409 casting. All right, let's see what we got here. So we got about, let's see, 10 more cars to go. I do have a couple more sizable collections, really minty condition I'm working on. Hopefully in the next week or two, I'll be able to bring them to the collector community as well. Jackrabbit white interior. Another car I get in practically every collection. And then here's a really nice example of the Carabo with the suicide doors. Yeah, I don't see these in many collections. These are like almost like the strip teaser for me. I really don't find them. This thing's dirty. It's got to be cleaned up. Um, there's certain castings that are considered common in the hobby, like the strip teaser. But I think even back in the day, kids didn't even like that casting back in the, you know, the early 70s. And I rarely get them in collections, even the Aqua. I've never gotten one other than Aqua. And I, I think I've probably only got a handful over the last 29 years. There's a nice Aqua Muttmobile. That's another one you don't see in any other color but Aqua either when you do find them in collections. I've found them in blue over the years, and this is another example. If I do get a sh six shooter, it's usually an Aqua. Uh, I have seen them in blue. I have gotten them in blue, but a lot of these concept cars were not that popular with the kids back in the day. Uh, I liked them. I liked all the concept cars. I thought they were cool. They were just different than what you would see on the street. And there's Fire Chief Cruiser. Nice example of that. Okay, five more cars to go. And a bunch of buttons. So it looks like every car has a button. It says it's pretty, eh, it looks like a little bit more metal than the plastic, but there's a handful of plastic in here. Here's a uh, purple custom VW. Again, nice shape, but it just needs to be cleaned up. It seems like there's some dirt or dust on it. It does come off, but you know, these collections from the Mid Atlantic States. You know, the ones, uh, the ones out west always seem to be in the best condition. Here's a beautiful, beautiful white interior. Beat McBandit. Purple. Really nice example of that. We got a few purples. Of course, no oranges as usual. You know, don't get many of them. Yeah, a couple little bugs joined the party here. 57 bird. Now, this is a uh, this is blue, but it's a lighter spray of blue. You know, some people will call that light blue, but I don't. That's just a little bit fade on the blue, the white interior. But that is really a pretty example, that car. I think that's one, that and purple are the two best colors, I think. The lighter blue and the purple and that casting, I think, are the best colors for that car. Now here is an antifreeze, a little bit slightly toned out. Corvette. As you can see, it's more in the back than it is anywhere. But evenly, evenly slightly toned. Car. So, this car 
complex was obviously kept in a cold, hot, moist climate all these years. I can tell from the condition of these cars. And there's a gold. It's just a Lola. Lola GT70. A little bit Tony on the back hatch. Not too bad, though. Nice color for that casting. All right. So that's really it. Got a bunch of buttons here. Pull them out. And uh, like I always say, I hope you guys... Oh, there's this uh, Boss All Silver Special button. These are ones I think are very underrated as far as a rarity is concerned. They don't show up very often in collections. But, uh, you know, it's got the Hot Wheels Club across the top, unlike the other ones that have Mattel across the top. And Mattel across the bottom on the club car. But I just think they're, I think they're a rare button. Let people argue with me, but I'm just telling you from my experience, I don't see them often. And when I get them, I hold on to them. I think I only have like three or four of them up in my case. They're uh, few and far between. Obviously, the olds is the most valuable of the buttons, but you know, this is uh, these buttons. If you find them, hold on to them because for some reason they don't end up in collections. I don't know where they go and why I get all these other buttons on cars and they don't show up, but it just is what it is. So, uh, check out the. Uh, uh, my Facebook page, check out, you know, please be sure to subscribe uh, to this channel so not miss any future collections or interesting videos. I'm going to be posting uh, a video soon on how I uh, appraise collections and how I find them. And I'm also going to do uh, a video, a good collector friend of mine, Carmine Cantwell. He uh, is a very talented young man that's going to produce a really nice overview of my personal collection and, uh, and in depth uh, regarding it. So uh, you're going to see some really amazing cars and in conditions that you may have never seen before. And uh, I'm excited that Carvine's going to do it, him and his father, and, and uh, they're good collector friends of mine. And, and uh, he just is an extremely talented young man who's got a bright future in television, film, and everything else that goes along with that. So here's the collection. Oh, the wheelie bars are here. Okay, isn't that nice? Found that, a couple sticker sheets too. Slightly used sticker sheets, and that's it. So this is the Jeanette, Pennsylvania collection. Uh, typical, as far as wear and condition, and play wear. You know, some were played with more than others, but you know, across the board, really nice. I just think it needs, some of these just really need to be cleaned up. So. Check out my book, Redline Archaeology. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart.com now. Check it out. Got all my secrets in there on how I find these collections on a fairly regular basis. And, uh, you know, happy hunting. And here's the overview of the collection. One last view. There's all the buttons. And all the cars. Give you a little bit of close-ups. Take a look. And I hope I'm giving you a good, good view of everything. Okay. So until next time, happy hunting. Remember, it's about the capture. Take care, everybody.